Yes, we can. Okay. All right. Well, we'll get started. Uh, I uh, definitely want to uh, congratulate our coaching staff and our players on the game uh, this past Saturday. I thought uh, they did a great job. They came well prepared for the game. Uh, they played to the very end. And while things weren't perfect, uh, we hung in there. We found just enough ways to make plays and enough ways to get some turnovers that definitely were crucial to our success. So uh, definitely very proud of our, our staff and our players. And, and we're looking forward to moving on to game two against Illinois. Uh, Illinois is a team that put it to us last year, pure and simple. Uh, they beat us and they beat us bad. Uh, they embarrassed us on our home field. Uh, they were more physical than us. They played harder than us, and they outcoached us. So, you know, this is a, a team that, uh, you know, had a very good year last year. They're talented. They're big and strong. They play downhill, and uh, they'll be ready to play. So it'll be a tough contest, and this will be a, a good test for our guys to prepare this week as hard as we can and get ready to play a, a tough Illinois opponent. Okay, we'll open it up for questions now. Mike Carmen, go ahead. Uh, hi, Jeff. I guess, first of all, what's your, what do you think your status will be for the week? Well, I'm looking to get back uh, on Wednesday. So Wednesday will be my first day back, and it seems like it's been a couple months. So to get back, is, is, uh, <laughs> it's about time. So I'm looking forward to that. I mean, is it for sure on Wednesday? Is there any more protocols that you have to go through before that becomes, like, final and official? No, I, I think uh, I think the the ten days will be up, and uh, I'll be able to come out of isolation and, and report back to work on Wednesday. Uh, how was it watching the game on Saturday from your house? Well, it wasn't a whole lot of fun. Uh, the end result definitely was great. Uh, my wife and kids and daughter made sure to get out of the house and go to the game, so it was just me uh, here, and uh, I don't blame them one bit. Uh, so it was unique. I, I haven't really experienced that before, nor probably do I look forward to ever doing it again uh, because it just doesn't feel like uh, <laughs> you're, you're a part of it a whole lot and there's not a whole lot you can do. But you know what? I, I knew going into the game, uh, we had a good week of practice. Our guys had worked hard. Our coaches were uh, preparing very hard. And I thought we had a good plan. I think uh, on offense, uh, Brian and our staff did a good job. Uh, we were able to to at least continue to try to run the ball and keep some balance, even though we still threw it 50 times. I think having some balance was critical uh, to open a few things up. It's very hard to, to play against teams that are playing for the pass, and that's all you do. So we've got to continue to build upon that. And then I think on defense, uh, you know, our defensive staff and players played hard. We did give up yards. Um, but we didn't give up a lot of big plays. And then we were able to get two crucial turnovers that at least really stopped drives when they were driving the ball that really you know, affected the outcome of the game for them. So without those uh, key stops for our defense, it would have been tough to win. Uh, what's Rondell's availability for this week? We're always hopeful and uh, we'll see as we get in the week. Why didn't he play? He was out. <laughs> that your decision or his decision or somebody else's decision? No, no, he, he was just out and, and uh, we'll, 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 whenever he's ready to play, he will play. Okay. I mean, injury related or something else? That's all I can tell you. I, I apologize. Okay. Uh, just, I mean, David Bell continues to perform at a high level, but um, in talking to him after the game, he feels like he's ready to take that next step because he, he really figures out, he really feels like he knows what's going on now. I mean, are you, did you see that a lot from him uh, in the off season and in practices? And obviously it came out in the game on Saturday. Well, I think he's known what's going on for a long time now. You know, he's a very talented receiver. Uh, you know, he works extremely hard. And, and while he was productive in year one, which he for sure was, you know, he had a few injuries that he had to play through. Uh, he found a way to get even better as the year went on. I think this past off season, uh, he wanted to work hard at finding ways to create maybe a little more separation, finding ways to get off the line of scrimmage and, and, and uh, you know, you know, gain some more separation from defensive backs when he's running his routes. And I think he has done a very good job at that. And then of course, as you guys see, I mean, the guy makes plays and he catches. 
catches the ball, catches the ball in traffic, and it's just something that comes very natural to him. Uh, and he has a knack for always catching the ball. So, you know, he was without question targeted quite a bit. Uh, he came through and did a very good job once again. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys that doesn't talk a whole lot and doesn't have to brag or, 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 or bring that to his game. He's all about business. Uh, he's a great teammate. I do think the emergence of Milton Wright in the game was great to see. It, to me, it was noticeable on TV that, hey, this guy is a very good player. You know, he had great get off and got open on routes and made strong catches and caught the ball and got north and south. He took a couple of big hits, came back and played. So I think that, you know, without having Ron Dell, having Milton Wright step up and make plays was, was crucial and critical to, to spread the wealth a little bit. And then, of course, you know, Sander ran hard. Our tight end made a few plays. And our other complimentary receivers did a good job. And we just got to continue to get more out of them and make sure that, you know, they're you know, continuing to prove and making uh, our offense better by having more weapons so that we can spread the ball around a little bit more. How did the offensive line grade out? Well, it was one of our better play uh, games by the offensive line. And we, we felt like we were making improvement. We felt like, you know, we had, <clears throat> excuse me, more capable guys that we could put in the game that while maybe we're not where we need to be, there is competition now uh, of about 10 guys that, uh, you know, we're going to rotate and we're going to uh, build off of that where they can compete against each other. Um, you know, there's, there's still strides to make. I, I think that uh, really Greg Long, uh, we were very happy with his performance for a guy who hadn't been here. He stepped in and, and did a very good job. Um, you know, had some other newcomers um, like Kyle Jernigan uh, that was able to, to hang in there and do a good job. And Sam Garvin, I thought, you know, played hard. Um, you know, Cam Craig, before he got injured, did some good things. Uh, but we had more guys, uh, excuse me, to, to spell our players, and that, and that helped us. Uh, Gus Hartwood got in there, Spencer Holstead, DJ Washington. Um, you know, Eric Miller and Will Bramble played. We need to continue to work them and get them better. I, th I thought they could have played better, but they played hard. So really, it's just a matter of continuing to work. Um, you know, as many guys as we have right now, it's about 10 that we feel like we can rotate in if we happen to have a few more, even better. But, uh, you know, I think trying to be a little more balanced, trying to, to help our guys a little bit where it's not always, uh, a pa <coughs> excuse me, a pass play uh, can really help us uh, in the end. And uh, we've got to continue to work that and continue to build upon that. Being down at the running back position did hurt us, but Xander was able to carry the load the entire game. Uh, is, is Craig's injury long-term, or could you get him back this week? <laughs> I don't know for sure yet. Uh, I would say it's doubtful for this week, but uh, we'll, we'll continue to see how he progresses throughout the week. What about King Daru? Well, that one, uh, we'll have to wait to the end of the week. Uh, we, were, we were hopeful he could play last week. He had a a little flare up in practice. Uh, so we've got to get him back because uh, he, he can be a good player for us and we need him in the mix. And Tyler Coyle? Tyler's going to be a little more uh, long-term, um, but he'll be back this year. But uh, I, would not, I would not say this week. All right. That's it for me for now. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
some youth there mixed in with a, a few others with experience, but there's still a ways to go. And while we always would want to be dominant, you know, we, we, we still have to work at it. And it's, it's going to be a, a weekly uh, battle uh, where we can try to progress and, and get some positive yards out in the running game and be more physical and find ways to protect when we have to and find ways to play more guys to provide competition. But, but Neil's done a great job. Uh, and I think he gels with all four of our old line coaches because it is an important position of a lot of guys up front. And that's, uh, as you know, they don't get a whole lot of respect and a whole lot of credit. But uh, when things are going well, they're normally playing, they're normally playing pretty good. Hey, uh, Gus Hartwig, you talked in camp how this guy was going to be part of the rotation. Sure enough, he played, I think, 13 snaps Saturday. Um, just give us your breakdown on Gus. Well, Gus has done a great job since he got here. Uh, he's actually been farther along than we thought he would be. Um, you know, gaining strength and uh, pop and power is something you just got to continue to work at and getting away from that. It'll take a little time. But with that said, boy, he plays hard. He's got good instincts. Uh, he loves to compete, and, and uh, he's going to continue to play more. So I, I anticipate him playing even more this week. Uh, and he can play a lot of positions for us right now. It'll probably be – center slash offensive guard but you know we put him in the camp at offensive tackle we've had some guys down and he stepped in did a very good job for someone who's really never played that position much so he just kind of got some some natural instinct and, and love for the game uh, he takes a lot of pride in in, in representing purdue and in, in this state uh so he's got a very bright future will marty biagi be back saturday jeff are, are all your assistant coaches together once again you got a full staff well, Marty uh, is going to come back the same day as me. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we, <coughs> we missed having him. Uh, but with this situation, uh, with everything going around, we, we've got to abide by the, the rules. But we're looking forward to getting him back. And I think that uh, Jamarcus Shepard and Ryan Wallace and Jesse Schmidt, another GA who stepped in, uh, you know, they did a very good job for, for running it while Marty was gone. And uh, just go back real quick. Uh, go back to Cam Jeff. <laughs> Now, at what point did you name Aiden the starter? How, how deep into camp were you when you said that's going to be our guy? Well, when we're very deep into camp. Really, it wasn't until the Sunday before the first game did we officially uh, talk to our quarterbacks and name a starter. We had competition all the way up until then. Really, it's an extremely close battle. Uh, you know, all three guys um, that have experience, uh, we feel like we can put in the game and do a very good job for us. Um, Aiden just had a slight, I mean, a slight edge. You know, he, he won some games for us at the end of last year. Uh, his strengths, you know, he's, he's got good accuracy and he's got good poise in the pocket. Uh, and the others have strengths in other areas that definitely are, are beneficial. Uh, so at, at any time, we're not going to be afraid to, to play any of our guys. But I think, uh, you know, Brian did a good job of, of hanging with Aiden. Uh, we had a little lull there. Uh, at the end of the second quarter, third quarter, and, and uh, Aiden found a way to kind of pick it up when he needed to, and that's what he's been good at. He's had great poise, and uh, when, when he has time and things are going well and the guys are open, he does a good job of distributing the ball. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, the exponent. Thank you. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Good. Uh, so first, I just want to ask how you're feeling and if you feel like you've recovered well. Yes, I, I do. I think that uh, this isolation that I've had, uh, you know, it took a little time to get over a few of the symptoms, but, you know, it's, it's like a normal uh, sickness that you get and uh, it might last a little longer than, than some of the others that, that, we, that we've had. But, uh, you know, I, I feel good and ready to get back and, uh, you know, I can't wait for Wednesday for myself. All right, great to hear, Coach. Um, so how well do you think Brian ran the plays last week, and would you consider letting your assistant coaches call the plays in the future? Well, I thought Brian did a very good job, and, uh, you know, I had great confidence that he would. You know, he's played the quarterback position for a long time. He's been with me as well. Uh, he, we got the same blood. Uh, we kind of you know, think alike a little bit, even though he's much calmer and cool and collective uh, than me, which is a great quality to have. So I applaud him. You know, I think his patience with the offense and his patience with Aiden throughout the game uh, was critical, and it definitely played a big factor. And I think uh, with him and our assistant coaching staff, I have great confidence 
in those guys. So, you know, really when it comes to play calling, yeah, I, w- I would feel great uh, on it or even other guys on our staff uh, uh, because I, I think we all meet together and we work together. You know, I just have been the one over the years to do it, but uh, I have great confidence in all of our guys. Okay, so Aiden mentioned in a press conference a couple of days ago that he feels like some of the offensive struggles came from some mental errors. So what do you think you're going to do maybe in practice this week to help reduce those mental errors going to next week? Well, Aiden, you know, when, when you throw the ball 50 times, you're not going to make all your decisions correctly. I think that, uh, you know, he forced the ball into coverage uh, more than a few times that he shouldn't have. Um, so, you know, those are things that he, he has to work on improving and making sure that, you know, he doesn't throw interceptions. We had to. There were probably a few others that were very close to being intercepted that he threw into coverage. So he's got to be smart. He's got to understand that uh, sometimes uh, plays are going to have to be uh, made by throwing the check down and throwing the underneath throw, and plays are going to have to be made even by him running some. So I think that's just something that is hard for some quarterbacks to understand. But when you're playing good football teams, you know, your legs uh, have to be you're ready to go. You have to be active if things aren't there and you have to make plays with your feet. So even though that's not his strength, he still has to do that. So I think he needs to work hard at that. And he has to understand that turnovers are critical to success. Uh, the, the, the two we had hurt us, but fortunately for us, our defense got to turnovers when they were driving to score. And that really was the, the difference in the game. In my opinion, is that we were, fa- we found a way on defense to create some of those, but I think he just has to make sure that, you know, turnovers are something that we can't have, and he's got to be very, very smart in his decision making. And then finally, how do you think this comeback win will affect the momentum going to this week's practice and then maybe next week's game? This well, it was, it was great to get a win against a very good opponent. It was great to come back in the end and win on our home turf. It was something that we needed to do. You know, this is a shortened season, so we've got to make the most of every game. You know, I think the challenge this week is our guys got to understand that that game's over. Uh, uh, so whether we won or lost, uh, we've got to move on to the next opponent. So it's going to test our maturity level. Uh, and, you know, I would like to think that our guys have the game last year in the back of their head. I mean, we got our, our tails kicked up and down the field for 60 minutes. Uh, and it was a, an ugly picture and credit for, to the uh, Illinois for, for playing a good game. So we've got to come ready to play or it, it'll happen again. This team is physical. They play downhill. Uh, they control the ball. Uh, they, they find ways to get turnovers. They, They've led the country in that category for the last couple of years. So this will be a great challenge, and we've got to come ready to play or it'll be a, uh, the same result. And, and, and no games in this conference are easy, and especially going to Illinois. That's it for me. Coach, I had a few events, okay? Yes. Uh, I hope you're feeling well. Uh, Aiden, is he a comeback artist? Would you, would you define him as that? As a- well, I think the – I think the results speak for itself. Uh, you know, he, he is very good in the fourth quarter. That is the strength of it. He's got great poise. Uh, nothing rattles him. Uh, so when you have a guy like that, uh, you know, you can always count on him to have a chance. And uh, he's definitely come through in the, in the clutch. Mm-hmm. So when Rondell first went out, David Bell, Moulton Wright hadn't really established themselves yet. And now that they have, once Rondell comes back, what do you expect uh, to see out of that trio all playing together? Well, the more weapons they have, the better we can be. And, uh, you know, I, while David played a great game, I'm very proud of him. I, I think the emergence of Milton right in the last game, uh, I was very proud of Milton. It, it was a performance that he had shown us in practice because he works extremely hard that he can do that. But carrying it over to the game and just his consistency on route running and catching the football strong and getting north and south after he catches it really – uh, what, what was fun to watch. And, and as I watched on TV, it was noticeable. So if we can continue to get other guys to step up uh, in the mix, which I think we have some other good young receivers, but they've got to prove it uh, during the game, you know, uh, whether it's Demond Anderson, TJ Sheffield, Malik Carr, uh, you know, down the line, uh, you know, Jared Sparks did a few good things coming back from injury. You know, the more weapons we have, the, the better we're going to be. And I think uh, still with that, you know, we've got to get the running back core uh, healthy and we have to run the football uh, and find ways to uh, get positive yards and control the ball that way because it's critical for our success. If we want to win, running the football successfully has to happen. Right, right. What's the biggest thing you see out of Illinois so far? 
Well, Illinois is going to be angry and mad uh, and coming to this game ready to play. And uh, I think defensively, Coach Smith has coached a lot of football in his life. Uh, they have good size up front. They're physical. They play downhill. They play a couple, uh, you know, normal coverages, but they play well. They take chances. Uh, their corners are aggressive. Uh, and like I said, they flat out kicked our tail last year. So this is going to be a team that, you know, has experience, um, you know, their offense maybe didn't put up the points they would like, so we have to find a way to have a great game on defense and limit uh, points by their offense. But at the same time, you know, we, we've got to create some 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 explosive plays and, and control the ball by running the football ourselves, and uh, we did not do that last year. We got to very handily. All right. Thanks, Coach. Yes. Sorry, I was mute there. Brian, nobody you have your hand up. Jeff, hey, just, just one quick topic from me. What do you think the unique challenges of playing on the road this year uh, might be? Well, <clears throat> there's some things that we, we've had to adjust, uh, you know, how you eat your meals, how you spread out, the different timing of those things. Uh, I think uh, playing in stadium where there's not a lot of people is something you have to come prepared for. And you have to understand you got to bring your own juice and your own energy and We've done that at home, but now we've got to go on the road and figure out a way to make sure that we, we realize this isn't a scrimmage. This is a real football game against a very hungry opponent. So I think, uh, you know, trying to just communicate and talk to your players about that and let them understand that uh, nothing just happens. You've got to make it happen, and you've got to continue to prove each and every week. Otherwise, you're going to lose, uh, and that's the, the way this season's going to work. Uh, and the way it's going to work just playing a conference only schedule for sure is that whoever plays the best is going to win. And, and, if, and if you're not ready to play, you're, you're not going to win in this conference. And we're definitely not going to win. Traveling under these conditions, probably having smaller, less comfortable accommodations on the road. You have to, does that run the risk of throwing guys out of their, maybe their comfort zones or whatever? And is that something that guys are going to have to overcome? Well, we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, we, we got a simple bus ride over. Uh, we'll be in a hotel like normal. Um, you know, uh, we, we've spaced some things out and uh, maybe more people have their own room than before. So there are some adjustments. But in the end, you know, every team's going to have to do the same thing. Uh, and when you get on the field you, and you play for 60 minutes, those things don't change. So I think we'll, we'll make the adjustments uh, just like every other a team that's playing college football and, and we're all happy to, to be back on the field playing. So whatever we have to do to, to make it work, we want to do. And I, and I do think the, you know, the, the testing that we're having to go through is, is, is been successful at this point. Obviously it's going to knock some people out to get it, but, you know, keeping guys safe and making sure that, you know, we're, we're, we're playing a game uh, where people are not, uh, positive because we've had daily testing. It, it's crucial, and, and, and hopefully that will continue. You haven't had to scale down your, your travel roster or anything like that, right? You can bring the same amount of players this year as you always have. Well, we're, yeah, we're going we're gonna to take uh, what we need. Uh, yeah, we, we may scale it down some. I, I know this past week, um, you know, we may be take as many to the hotel as we normally would, but yet we, we had our full-scale meetings done before we went to the hotel and that was different. So we, we had our pregame meal, then we came back to the facility and did all of our meetings before we went to the hotel. So, so going to the hotel wasn't as big as an issue. Uh, we didn't dress as many guys as we'd like to. I mean, I, I would love to dress the entire roster for home games because I think they deserve and earn that opportunity. But because of COVID and the situation, we did not, but our guys were in the stands and they were cheering us on and I saw that. Uh, so yeah, there's adjustments to make. And, but we'll, we'll, we'll take you know, what we need. It's just a matter of we want to be careful and cautious uh, with the amount. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, Chuck Culpepper with the uh, Washington Post. Hi, Jeff. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm very happy you're feeling better um, to hear that. Um, we, we always hear coaches um, talk about the chaos of the sideline. You know, I've got to look at the film later to know what went on, that kind of thing. How would you describe what the silence, the relative silence was like? Um, what, what, what was the biggest difference, do you think? Well, I wasn't on the sideline, so I can't tell you from firsthand. Um, no, I mean, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, for you to sit in silence 
as opposed to your normal <laughs> role? Well, it, it, that was no fun for sure. Uh, and I'm sure it wouldn't be for anybody, uh, especially when you're supposed to be coaching the team and you're sitting on your rear end where everyone else is doing all the work. So, you know, it, it's one of those things. Uh, there, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. We tried to make some appeals, but in the end, you know, you try to develop a coaching staff of guys that love football, that are good people, that understand and, and think alike, and that, you know, you get all your thoughts down on paper and uh, you communicate during the week, which I was in constant communication with our guys. But, you know, on game days, it's just about going out and playing. And, and sometimes, you know, we maybe we put too much pressure on our guys when we take the field. And uh, because we had some, some people missing, maybe they were more relaxed and they were maybe – able to go out there and just cut it loose and play and understand that, yeah, we're not at full strength, but it doesn't matter. You know, you guys got prepared hard and, and you've earned the right to, to compete. So I think, you know, our coaches did a good job of being calm on the sideline and being composed and, and making sure our players understood that we were always in the game and that we had a chance to win. And I think that's helped, that helped us win in, uh, against Iowa. And uh, from which room or rooms did you watch? Did you stay seated? Did you pace? Did you kneel? Did you run around? Did, are there any pets involved? What did it look like? Well, that, that's a good question. Like I said, uh, my wife and daughter, of course, my son's always at the games. My wife and daughter got out of the house, went to the game. And I said, yeah, you need to get out of this house with me around here. So there were multiple TVs on uh, in the house, in the little pool house we have outside. Uh, and yes, I did have a dog and there were a few times when I yelled, the dog knew to gather very quiet. Uh, so I felt bad that, uh, I, I scared the dog a few times, but I, I think for the most part, I was somewhat calm and collective and, uh, you know, I, 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 I felt our guys did a good job. And while there was a little bit of a lull there during the game where I had some concerns, uh, we hung in there and our guys played hard and it was fun to, you know, it was, I didn't enjoy, but it was fun to watch our team compete to the end and win. Uh, so I was very proud of our football team and our coaching staff. Last crucial question. What kind of dog? <laughs> well, we've got a, uh, uh, three force poodle for St. Bernard. Uh, and you know, I, I, told my wife and daughter for years a dog uh, but they snuck away during the pandemic and, and brought one to the house uh, but since we have it I, I I do like it now even though I, I won't admit it uh, and it's uh you know it's like having another child and, and as you guys know we have pets uh, you know they're, they're fun to have around and they keep you occupied and they give you something to do and during this isolation I've had I actually you know walking the dog around the, the neighborhood uh, it's about the only thing that I can do where I feel like I've accomplished anything uh so you know the the, the when I said I didn't want a dog my, my family got it and who's the one who normally walks to take care more so than the others thank you all the best thank you okay thanks okay uh Dakota do you have anything yeah, just one quick one, Jeff. Uh, wanted to ask you, obviously, I know you're back on Wednesday, but what does this week in practice look like since you're going to be uh, away from the program again today and then and tomorrow as well? What kind of alters heading into to game day on Saturday with you gone for, for two more days? Well, it'll just continue to be the same. You know, I I, uh, I have my video equipment here, so we're able to – I'm able to watch video. We're able to, to – to zoom into meetings and talk about uh, the plan going forward. I'm able to zoom in and talk to the team. I'm able to continue to prepare and plan for practice and put that together. Uh, really, it's kind of the same as, as last week uh, where I, I'm, I'm heavily involved, but at the same time, I'm not on the field in practice. So that's the uh, the bad part. That's the boring part that uh, we have to deal with. Luckily today, we're, we're just preparing and prepping uh, for Illinois. And we don't, we're not on the practice field, but uh, I'll miss one more practice on Tuesday and then be back uh, Wednesday morning and, and uh, you know, just the things with COVID anyway, we, you know, we're, you know, we, we, we've had a few issues uh, in our office. Uh, as you guys know, you know, we don't talk about a whole lot, but we've had some things happen. We've had to adjust how we meet as coaches and um, there's, there's more remote meetings than we're normally used to, but that's just <coughs> sign of the times. You know? We didn't really want to lose any more coaches than what we had. We, we had a, 
we had a breakup in a, an area of the office and we wanted to be very cautious and we're still continuing to be cautious because this thing, uh, you don't know when it's going to pop up. And uh, from at least what I understand, it can stay in your body uh, for seven to 10 days uh, when you maybe, you know, been uh, infected by someone uh, that's contagious. And it doesn't show up for a long time. So we, we've had to adjust and uh, we'll continue to do that. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Okay, Tom, Tom Deanhart, you have your hand up for a follow up. Hey, just one quick, silly follow up, Jeff. What's your dog's name? <laughs> Hello? I don't think anybody can hear you, Coach. Its name is Coco. Coco, okay, great. Sounds and good. I treat, and I treat it much better than Matt treats Vladimir, his dog, much better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not fair. Mike, you have a follow-up? You have your hand up? I do. I got a football question. Uh, we haven't talked really a lot about your defense and the new staff, the new alignment. Uh, you seem to wrote – there seemed to be a rotation of a lot of guys in there. Did you feel like your defense uh, was still pretty strong? as you got into the second half in the fourth quarter? And if so, how much did that maybe help them, you know, keep Iowa out of the end zone? Well, I was very proud of our defensive staff uh, and our players. Uh, you know, that was the plan going in is, is to play more guys. I think even throughout fall camp, uh, you know, when I've talked before, I feel like we're, 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 we're too deep in a lot of positions there. And, and while there may be a slight, a drop off, whether it's through inexperience or slightly in talent. Uh, we feel like we have some capable guys and, and quite a few guys that have played and, and played last year. And while it wasn't up to, to par at times, they gained a lot of experience. So, uh, you know, I think our, our defense staff did a great job of rotating those guys, trying to keep them fresh. You know, we gave up a few chunks here and there on some plays. We gave up some yardage, but we, we, we didn't give up the big play. Uh, and we were able to create some turnovers uh, when they were driving that was crucial to our success. Uh, we were able to make a stop uh, at the end of the game uh, when, when we took the lead, which we had not been very good at in the past. So it was great to see our defense do that. Uh, so, you know, I think we've made strides. And I think that our guys understand the package. I think there's uh, a thorough education going on where our, our guys are up to speed. and not having misalignments and miscommunication and guys running free up and down the field. Uh, we, we've gotten better than that. We got better than that this past game against a, you know, a solid football team that, you know, maybe isn't the best offense in the conference, but it's a, a solid offense that runs the ball and, and play actions off of it. So, you know, I think we made improvement. And we've got to continue to build upon it. And we've got to continue to find ways to, to get stops and turnovers. But I, I, I like uh, the progress that we've made. Uh, assuming you're back Saturday, will Brian go back up into the press box? Yeah, more than likely. That, that'll probably yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, there's, there's a handful of people here on the call that, that I haven't called on yet. Does anybody else have any further questions for Coach? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Mike Merritt, do you have anything? I'm good, thank you. Okay, everybody's good. Charlie Clifford, you're good. Yes, I'm good, thank you. Okay, well, it sounds like we got everything covered uh, for this week. So thank you all for taking part. Coach Brown, thank you for your time. Um, We'll, uh, we'll talk with Coach again on, on Thursday when he's, when he's back at the facility. So thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you uh, tomorrow for the uh, offensive players. Thank you. Thanks, Matt.